these 10 days of violence and chaos are heartbreaking. A prolonged full-scale war is unbearable to contemplate. The power struggle in Sudan is not only putting that country's future at risk, it's lighting a fuse that could detonate across borders, causing immense suffering for years and setting development back for decades. Excellencies, the fighting must stop immediately. We need an all-out effort for peace. I call on the parties to the conflict, on Generals Abdel Fattah al burham and Mohamed Amdan Daglo, Emeti, and the Sudanese Armed Forces and the Rapid Support Forces to silence the guns. It is incumbent on Sudanese leaders to put the interests of their people front and center. This conflict will not and must not be resolved on the battlefield with the bodies of Sudan's people. The Sudanese people have made their wishes very clear. They want peace and the restoration of civilian rule through the transition to democracy. The parties to the conflict must respect the 72-hour ceasefire brokered by the United States and come together to establish a permanent cessation of hostilities. I urge all council members and other member states and regional organizations with influence to press them to de-escalate tensions and return to the negotiating table immediately. Both of the warring parties have fought with disregard for the laws and norms of war attacking densely populated areas with little consideration for civilians, for hospitals, or even for vehicles transferring the wounded and the sick. I urge both sides to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law and ensure the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure. Both leaders have not been able to fully commit to a complete ceasefire or implement one. The two generals continue trading accusations and issuing competing claims of control over key installations. There is yet no unequivocal sign that either is ready to seriously negotiate, suggesting that both think that securing a military victory over the other is possible. This is a miscalculation. What has been unfolding there since April 15th is a nightmare for ordinary citizens and aid workers alike. The fighting must stop. This conflict will not only deepen those needs, it also threatens to unleash an entirely new wave of humanitarian challenges. Fighting is massively impeding and imperiling aid operations. A humanitarian crisis is quickly turning into a catastrophe. There is a real risk of regional conflagration and indeed internationalizing this conflict. All the ingredients are there. We have seen this happen 11 years ago in Libya, which is on the Sudan's northern border, consequences of which the entire region is still affected with today. ما كانت الأحداث الحالية لتقع لو وفى أو أوفى المجتمع الدولي بتعهداته في توفير الدعم المالي لإنجاز عمليات نزع السلاح والتسريح وإعادة الدمج في دارفور إذ كانت ستوفر مثالا عمليا للاقتداء به.